the scope of today's discussion will be talking about enumeration, then move on to exceptions. So enumeration, we basically use it uh, when we have some, some variable where the possible values can be listed in the enumerator. Uh, last time, together, we saw the example of gender. For example, gender, what are the possible values of gender? Yes, female and male. Another example could be, for example, directions. Direction in a, the directions that we know. There is a north, uh, south, east, and west. And there are many other examples. For example, the days of the week. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. The month of the year. Uh, and so on. There are lots of uh, example variables where the values can be enumerated. The value is a fixed list of values. But for example, something like names, name, or first name. This cannot be, of course, an enumeration because the, the possibilities are unlimited. There is infinity of possible values. So when do we start thinking about creating an enumeration? We know the values of the variables. Uh, yes, where the values of the variables are known and the list of possible values is fixed. And we can, at that time, we can go ahead and create an enumeration. So let me illustrate this by going through and creating an example. We create an example together again, similar to what we did last time. Um, okay, let me create it here. So if I, yeah, if I go ahead and create a class, I will create a, a new example, and I create a main method there. So I'll start redo exactly what we did last time. So first of all, to create an enumeration, I go ahead and say public enum, and then the name of the enumeration, for example, gender. And then inside this enumeration, I will have uh, the, va the possible values comma separated. Mm -hmm. So here is female and male. And because these are constants, I, the convention or the naming convention is to make the values of the enumeration up to this. This is my convention because they are constant. So this way, I'm basically creating an enumeration. So, for example, in my program, if I have something like gender as a, as a, as a variable, so instead of declaring it as a string, of course, I can go ahead and create it as a string, but this is not the optimal way, to, the optimal way of doing it, because the possible values here, the possible values here are endless mm -hmm. in a string. So I want to restrict the possible values of gender to just these two possible values. So how can I do this? All I do, instead of using the data type string, I will use the data type gender. Yeah. Now, you see, once I put the data type gender, immediately the compiler is complaining. Mm -hmm. Complaining, saying what? Miss, mm -hmm. cannot convert to string. Not only this, basically, what possible values I can store in gender? Gender not female, gender not Yeah, that's it. No, no other value can go in there. So, instead of writing it this way, I'll do gender. Sorry gender dot female, for example. Yeah? So that's the concept of enumeration. And by the way, when I create an enumeration, when I create an enumeration, I am basically creating a new data type. Once I create an enumeration, I can use it as a data type. And this is exactly what I'm doing. Yes? So before here, if you remember, I had a string. And I changed it to another data type, which is the gender. Yeah? So when I create an enumeration, I am really creating a new data type. When I'm creating a new class, I'm really creating a new data type. Yes? That, that is the, the basic idea. 
now I can also use it for example in a switch statement in here this is a switch and then I put here gender and then by the way like because of uh, this one being an enumeration the compiler no sorry the IDE which is the Eclipse is trying to give me some hint do you want to add some uh, missing statements add the missing case statement it, it knows how to do them. Why does it know how to do them? Because the, the values, uh, the possible values are, are, uh, is listed. No, the possible values are already declared. Okay? Um, if, it, if the gender is a string, of course we cannot do this. Now this is a minor little thing that we get as an extra bonus for using enumeration. Right? It's not significant. What is significant is basically I am restricting the possible values of gender to only be these two. Okay? So everywhere in the program, nobody will come and put some other gender or spell it differently, or female they put F and male they put M. No. Everybody will use exactly the same values. So I am forcing these particular values for the gender. Is clear the idea of, of enumeration? So when do we even think about creating enumeration? In which scenario? Sorry? Yes, when the, when the variable accepts a fixed number, fixed, uh, no, or another way to say it, when the possible values of the variable they can be enumerated, can be, uh, can be enumerated, you can, you can basically enumerate the, the possible values. Then at that time, instead of keeping the data type generic, like int or float or double or, or string, instead of keeping it generic and you put any possible value. No, you restrict it to only those values that make sense. Is clear? Okay. Now, you don't need to really put it inside the same class. I can, of course, this is just to demonstrate. Uh, in real life, I go ahead and create it as a separate class. In, in, in fact, I can create it as an enumeration. So if, when, I say, when I go here, new in Eclipse and say, I can create class, I can create an enum, okay? And I, I will call it here gender, okay? And then in here, inside the enum, all I do, I put a list of constants, female, male, okay? That's it. This is what an enumeration is. It is exactly as I created the new data type, and uh, in here, I'm making use of it. Yeah? So far is clear? Okay. So one thing I want to show you. This is the this is how we how we write it as, as developers. This is how we create an enumeration. But internally, inside, inside the, in, in Java, what is really going on? This one is really a class. So internally, let me show you what Java is doing internally. What Java is doing internally is basically putting here a class, okay? And here, this one becomes public static final gender female equal new gender, okay? And this one really is exactly the same as this. This is exactly how this enumeration gets translated internally, okay? So really, in, the, in, in reality, an enumeration is really a class. Mm -hmm. And these constants are nothing but, these constants are nothing but static attributes. Static attributes that are initialized to an instance of the class. 
There are static attributes that are initialized as instance of class. Sorry? Uh, we have to put final, yes. Why do we need to put final? Because yes, cannot be changed because these are constants. Yes. Uh, you see here, did, uh, let me save. Um, of course, in here, cannot switch value of type gender outside complex. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, no problem. Okay. Um, this is just to show you internally what's going on. Okay, the reason why I uh, kind of showed you this because of uh, the reason I'm going to s say it now. Okay, because it is a class internally, because it is a class, I basically can have constructor, I can have attributes, and I can have methods. Okay, so because if I just tell you all oh, enumeration can have constructor, can have attributes, can have methods, you might be surprised, but if you know that internally an enumeration is represented as a class, the, the surprise is gone, okay? So let me now uh, give you another example, maybe a little bit more interesting. So for example, the uh, traffic lights. The traffic lights, what are the possible colors or state of the light? Red, green, red. Yes, green, yellow, red, that's it. Can it be any other color? No, so the state, the possible values is fixed. So it is a good example to, for it to, for, for this example, we can create an enumeration, yes? So let's do so, uh, here it is. So for example, create a new enum. Now you know how to create a new enum. I will call it what? Um, traffic, traffic light state, yeah? the state of the traffic lights could be one of these possible values. And what are these possible values? Green. You see here I put everything uppercase because this is the convention. This is uh, constants. And the red. Yeah, that's it. I created now, uh, a, like I created an enumeration. And then I can use this enumeration as a data type. So I can come here and say here, here is the traffic light state, state equals traffic light state, and these are the possible values. Yes? Green or something like this. Now, if I want, for example, to ask the user, just pick to this example, I ask the user, enter one of the possible values. I don't need to have code, please enter either green or red or or yellow, because I already defined it in the enumeration, yes? So I can go ahead and display this to the user, something like this. So what I can do here, for var state, traffic light, so every, every enumeration, Java behind the scene adds this, uh, it adds this static, method values that give me all the possible values of the state mm -hmm. yeah also uh, sorry all the possible values of the uh, of the enumeration and then as you can as you can already uh, see i can do here system dot out dot print line and i can print this state yeah so, what, I, what, it's, what this one will be doing, it will iterate through every possible value of state, traffic light state, and, and display it. Why it's complaining here? Duplicate local variable. Ah, okay, because I already declared it here, I cannot declare it here. Okay, traffic... Yes. Package, we already discussed it last time. It's just a way of organizing. Yeah, that is, is this like a list multi container thing that required a separate package? It's only no, package. not really. What I mean here, for example, I might have a package called, uh, uh, let's say, uh, MOT, which is the Ministry of Transportation and communication, mm -hmm. MOT as a package, mm -hmm. dot 
traffic light management mm -hmm. uh, as a package. Mm -hmm. And then underneath there, I will have many classes and enumeration and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, I won't create a package just for the enumeration, yeah. but I will put the enumeration with other related classes in the same package. Okay. Uh, so, so here the light state uh, class. Uh, this is just another example. Okay. Right? So what I want to say here, like um, I, we go to root together, together and we do example together, yeah? yes, from scratch for mm -hmm. you to really understand the concept. Mm -hmm. Then I provide many other examples for you to explore on your own. You cannot go through all of them. Mm -hmm. So instead of just showing you a pre-written example, I try to, we try to develop it together so you see the details. Mm -hmm. Yes, But there is, there is already there some kind of example yeah but uh, we want to build our own and these examples usually that i provide are a little bit more advanced than the one we explain in class and i try to pick up something simple so we because our focus here is to understand the concept mm -hmm. and of course the application of the concept yes mm -hmm. okay so when i run this what do you think we will see colors. The, the colors okay the possible values of of the of that yes okay now what I can do, since the traffic light state, since the, since the enumeration is really a class, I can have attributes, I can have methods, I can have constructors. Okay? Now, before I do this, before I do, do this, I just want to show you, although it is internally represented as a class, the enumeration internally represented as a class, but I cannot go ahead and instantiate it. It's not allowed. I cannot go here and say new traffic lights. It doesn't even, even Eclipse is not giving me as an option uh, because it doesn't make sense. It's by definition, the enumeration, by definition, the enumeration cannot be instantiated, cannot instantiate the type traffic light state. Yes? So it is a class with some restriction. What is the restriction? You cannot create an instance of it. The only thing you can do, the only thing you can do, you can go to the class itself and access the constants or access methods that you provide. Everything in the class will be, everything is basically static in the class. In the actual. Sorry, everything, uh, the, uh, sorry, what is it? Uh, yes, the, these attributes are static. So you can access them without creating an instance. You just access them directly. Okay. So here it is, green. What I meant is, remember when I told you that an enumeration at the end of the day is a, is a class, the, the constants are really static variables. That's why we can access them directly from the enumeration itself. Okay. And so... Let us let me go back to the uh, traffic light. What I want to do now, I want to store maybe some extra attributes for each light, for each state of the light. Mm -hmm. Maybe an extra attribute, maybe the duration that every light, every color stays. So what I will do here, let me create a private uh, variable or private attributes. I will call it duration. I will make it an int. And then I also I will provide also I will provide the constructor, and this constructor will take as an input the duration. Yes. I will make the constructor private. Why do I why I am making the constructor private? So that the, the users cannot change the duration. No, no, not really. Uh, well, when do we use the constructor? We want to instantiate. We want to instantiate. Can we instantiate an enumeration? No. no. So it it's make a lot of sense to make the constructors private because we cannot instantiate an enumeration. Yeah? Okay. Now, what I will do with this duration I get from the constructor, I store it in this variable. Yeah? And then all I do, I provide a get here. Get... Uh, public int get duration and what I do here I will basically return the duration 
Okay. Now, when, remember, these ones are really, if you look carefully inside, in, internally, what Java is doing, is doing something like this. It's basically for each constant, it's instantiate the class itself. It's assigned an instance of a class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why in here, in this light state enum, yes, here, light state enum, what I will do here, between parentheses, I will say, okay, the green, I'll keep it 50 seconds. The yellow, I'll keep it for four seconds. And then the red, I'll keep it for 60 seconds. Okay, close this one. That's it. That's what's going on. So enumeration in a simple enumeration, if you want to keep it super simple, you just put constant, and that's it. This is good enough already. Okay. In case, in case you want to store some extra little attributes uh, with each, which each, with each possible value of the enumeration, you can do so. To do this, you basically create an attribute. By the way, you can also put this one as final because you, it will not change. Once you initialize it in the constructor, it cannot change. Okay, so what I mean here, you create a, a private variable. You initialize it during the construction. That's your only chance. Yeah. Initialize it during the constructor and then re you return it. Okay. Uh, now, if I go back to my uh, example here, you saw when I did here the state, print the state, I can also say plus stays on for, and how do I get the duration? State dot get duration. Okay. Not only I'm storing constant values in this enumeration, but I'm also associating some small pieces of information with these enumeration values. In this case, what I am what I'm storing extra the duration, okay? And when I run this, you can see I will get the possible states, which are green, yellow, red, and also I can get the, the duration associated with them. Is clear? Yeah. Okay. So let me go back. Oh, before I go back to the example to the slides. For example, in here, we can leave it this way. It's enough, for example, gender, female, male. What I can also extend it with some extra attributes. For example, I can think of abbreviation attributes. What will be the abbreviation for female? F. 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 And for male? F. M. Yeah? So, and, and how will we do this? Should we do it together quickly or it's clear? So, what I can do here, if I want to store abbreviation with each of these constants, I will create private final char abbreviation yeah abbreviation yes this is correct spelling okay what do I do with this oh, sorry what do I do with this abbreviation I need to create a, a constructor so here is a constructor. I'm making it private because there is you cannot instance you can you cannot create an instance of enum. So I make it private, and it will take as an input the uh, it will take as an input the abbreviation. And what the constructor will do? It will store it in the abbreviation attributes, and then I'll provide a get uh, which is a public char get abbreviation and I'll what I'll do inside here return the abbreviation yes okay so so what I can do now I can go back to my example here I'll do something similar to this um, so here we'll just call it gender, although this will complain. Yeah, okay, hopefully. Okay, so here is the gender, gender dot, sorry, gender dot values. These are all the possible values of gender. And then here I will say gender Abbreviated, 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 
create it as and then I will do here gender dot get abbreviation oh, it's not Oh, ah, yes, yes, thank you. Yes, you're right. So, in here, I will be the abbreviation will be F. No, because this one is constant, so it's a char, so it's a single quote. An abbreviation for this one is M. Sorry? That's how the syntax says. So, in enumeration, you declare the enumeration and you put the constant separated by comma. That's it. Because I because I finish if if I didn't have this extra stuff, if I didn't have this extra stuff, I can just end it there. Okay. But because I have extra, I need to separate this extra stuff from the constant. That's why I put the the uh, I put the semicolon. Yes. Okay. Uh, is this fine or still complaining? Okay, so here gender dot get abbreviation. Yeah. So is clear now? Yes. So if I run, hopefully run this. Yep. So you see here, I get female abbreviated as F and male abbreviated as M. Yeah. Is clear? Yes. Please focus with me. Okay. Uh, the problem is I have to go to the video and, and uh, find this focus with me or I just throw, I put it like this. Um, anyway. Okay. So let us uh, continue. So let me just summarize what I just said. So for some variables, the possible values could be enumerated. So instead of keeping the data type, generic data type, we go ahead and create special data type and list all the possible values as constant. Mm -hmm. If you just do that, that is good enough. That's it. If you want to go a little bit more sophisticated, you can associate some attributes with this constant. And the way you do that, you create an attribute within the enumeration. You create a const, uh, you create a constructor to initialize this attribute, and you provide get methods to read these attributes. Okay, and I gave you two examples: the light with the possible states, the red, green, the red, yellow, uh, sorry, green, yellow, and red. We can just stop it there, or we can extend it to associate some duration with each of these constants. And we have the duration uh, attributes, duration, uh, and the constructor to initialize it, and the get duration to return it. And we did exactly the same with male and female. It was good enough to just put gender and two constants, but we want to make it a little bit more elegant, and we added abbreviation. That's basically the idea of enumeration. Is clear? Okay. If the values cannot be enumerated, don't, don't forget about enumeration. So enumeration is a special case when the possible values of a variable is fixed. Okay, and these, and these values are constants. By definition, they are constant. Okay. Uh, so now, I think just because of the time, let me jump now to another very important uh, concept and very important feature of any programming language is called exceptions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what is an exception? An error. Yes, it's, it's an indication that something is going wrong in your program while the program is running. Yeah? So similar, uh, those of you who drive, so when you run low on petrol, mm -hmm. you basically, what you, do, what you see in the dashboard, some kind of light, yellow, uh, yellow. Now, if you ignore it, okay, you, you don't do anything about it, what, you will, what will happen? We'll stop, and then you have to call and a lot of inconvenience to to get you up and running again, okay? So basically an exception, uh, a wise person, when there's an exception, and, uh, and the car, let's say, gives you an indication that of, there is an exception, you don't just ignore it. What you do, you do something about it. It depends on the scenario. If it, if it, needs, if it is a light, 
sorry, if it is a law on uh, petrol, you go and, and fill. Okay. If it is, for example, the temperature is going in on the red. Uh, if you continue driving, then it is, it's a big problem. Okay. The damage bill or the, the fixing would be much much higher. Okay. So exceptions. You get some indication that there is something going wrong. That's what an exception is. And you're supposed to do what? Sorry. Handle it. In the, in the technical term of programmers, we have an exception, and we need to handle the exception. Is clear the concept? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me show you a concrete example, and then I will explain what's going on. Uh, let me just copy this one, and then... Okay, here it is. I want to create from scratch so you, you understand what's going on here. So this is exception, no, exception, exception, example, yes? Okay, so in here, all right, um, so let's take a look at this together, see what this program is trying to do. Okay, what's the first line is doing? This line here? Creating an array. array. Thank you very much. It's creating and initializing an array of three elements. And this will do, this will create in memory, will allocate some memory for three elements and put these values in these elements. Okay? And this array, how we, how we will be able to access this array? By index. Thank you. So what is the possible values of the index? Zero to size minus one. What is the size? Three. Three to two. Yes? So far it's clear to us? Okay. Now the second line. What the second line is trying to do? Trying to access the fourth element of the array. With index three, which means, yes, we're trying to access the fourth element. Because remember, the index starts from zero. Do we have this fourth element? Of course we don't have this fourth element. Now, if you are in C++, you are on your own. C++ don't care. Okay? You will be going to some neighbor program and trying to read their memory location, and good luck. You might be getting whatever. Okay? We might even crash other programs or crash your program. It's, 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 C++ says, we, we don't, I don't care. I'm not going to help you. Okay? But Java, no. Java says, oh, if you try to access something that does not exist, outside the bounds of the array, Java will tell you, no, it will throw at you an exception. Yeah? So what do you think will happen when we run this program? What type of error? Yes? Index error. What do you mean index error? Index out of range error. Basically, it is out of range. What is the possible range? Zero to two. Zero to two. We, are we within the possible range or allowed range? No, we are outside the range. And who does this verification on our behalf? The Java runtime, not the compiler, when the program is running. If the compiler was able to help us, we would, we would have got some error. It's not the compiler. Compiler doesn't detect this. Can you see it? There is an error. Of course, if I am an experienced programmer, I will spot it immediately. Okay? The compiler is not able to, uh, to see it. Who will see this error? The runtime. Okay? We didn't, unfortunately, we didn't discuss this before. I will take some opportunity later and explain it. But basically, for now, when you are running a Java program, it runs within a container. It's called the Java Virtual Machine. Mm -hmm. And this container, one of the things it does, it watches for this type of errors or exceptions, and it will throw an exception at you as a developer, okay? If you don't do anything about this exception that will be thrown at you, what will happen to your program? It will crash. That's it. Exactly the same. If your car is telling you, I am a chan, I don't have any petrol left, okay? And you ignore it, say, oh, next, next station, next station, or tomorrow, what will happen? It will stop, and then it will be a much bigger problem. You have to call your parents or friends, and uh, 
and you you know and with the heat and so on okay so you basically pay the price of ignoring the exception you get the idea okay so if i run this what happens to my program it's an exception. What is the exception? What is what type of exception here? Array index out of bound exception. Yes. Now, you see this line. This 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 line. What did we execute this line? No. This is an innocent line. It didn't do anything. And because of our uh, what how we will call it? Because of our not handling the error. This line, this, this line was a victim. Which line caused the problem? Line six. This one even tell me. It's line six who caused the problem. Okay. But this, this do line seven got the chance to execute? No. Basically, this is the problem. If there is an exception, and if you as developer don't do anything about it, you don't handle the exception, what happens to your program? Basically, your program crash immediately stops. And this is very, very bad for your users. You know, your users, they might see you on the streets and might not, not even greet you, okay? Because you are giving them a program that crash. This is the worst thing you can do, okay? You just hide. You will start hiding from your users. You don't want to do that. So, but there is a mechanism to, to avoid this. What you need to do as a good programmer, handle exceptions. Don't ignore exceptions. Yes? So how do we handle exceptions? Which line is, 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 might cause a problem? Six. Line six. So what we do, we come to line six and we wrap it. Of course, we could have done validation, but just imagine for now we, we didn't do validation. Imagine we just, this is the suspect line that might cause us harm. Okay, and then basically what I will do, I will do here try, try this. If there is something, don't ignore it, catch it, and do something about it. Okay, what could go wrong in this line? Yes, this is the exception that can take place. Okay, and basically in here what I will do, system dot out dot print line and then in here I put exception dot get message okay at least what I'm doing here at least all I'm doing I cannot do much in here at least I'm informing the user and let the program complete its work successfully and peaceful okay so when I run this now did my program crash? No. The user did it got a, a much better message. At least it's still a little bit too technical for average user, but better than the red one. Yeah. And better than crashing everything. Okay? It did not crash. It said index out of bound for length three. Anyway, it's not we forget them. The Java people they did lots of work. And this is not maybe not very meaningful message, but it doesn't matter. But we got it as technical. People, we know what it go, what's going wrong. Did this line was a victim again? No. No, it's got the chance to continue. You see the idea of exception handling? So when there is an exception, you basically, you can handle it instead of letting the program crash. So how do you handle exception? So you, where do you put the try and catch? On the line that we suspect. On the line or set of lines that are possible to have exception, we wrap them in try and catch. Okay? This is not a very realistic example. I, did, I couldn't give you a more realistic example until later on you will see more realistic examples. But let me tell you a conceptually more realistic example. Usually, usually exceptions, because this can be handled easily by through validation. If somebody tries to access, we first check whether the index is between yeah. zero and size. Because we know everything. We could have avoided the exception. 
Yeah? We could have avoided the exception. But sometimes there is no way to avoid the exception. Let me give you an example. An example of trying to read a file. Okay, your program is trying to read a file. Many things can go wrong. The file could have been deleted. Maybe the file is corrupted. Maybe you don't have access to it. Okay? Yes. You, uh, maybe uh, I have come across this. Maybe I'm not sure if you came across this before. You try to r run some program, and the program asking you, please give me some help to find some file that I'm not able to find. Okay? So what I mean, the application is expecting some file at a certain location, but failed to find it. Maybe it was deleted by mistake or corrupted. So instead of crashing, the application gives you another chance. So imagine this try. The application will try to open the file and read it. If it if it uh, if it if it doesn't find it or see there's some issue, it will in the catch it will ask you. It will give you uh, like a browser kind of window and ask you, please help me find the, this particular file. Yeah, this is what I mean by exception. So in here, exception handling is a must when you are dealing with something outside your control. Mm -hmm. The f are the files under your control? No, they are under the control of the operating system and the user. The user might delete the file. Let me give you another example. You try to write a disk. You try to create a file. Maybe the disk is full. Maybe you don't have the permission to run. Yeah? Another example. You want to send some message from your system to another system. Maybe the internet is down. Maybe the other server is down. So you see here, yeah. so this is not a very realistic example, but good enough to really illustrate the concept. Yeah? So basically when you are programming, when you are programming, any lines, any lines that are, that can possibly cause an exception, that can possibly cause an exception, the obvious ones like reading from file, writing to a file, or communicating through a network, they could be exceptions. So what you do on those lines that that can make cause exception, what you do to them, you, you wrap them in a try and catch. Say, try do this. If something happens, jump to the catch block and do something instead of crashing. Is clear the idea of exception handling? Okay. Now, exception handling is not limited to uh, you you handle exceptions. You can also throw exceptions. You, as developers, when somebody asks you to do something nonsense, you don't just do it for them. What you do? You throw an exception at them. Okay? Yes? Okay. So, somebody can give me an example? We saw an example before, if you remember. Yes, thank you very much. So, let's say we have a set amount method. And then you, somebody is trying to put 13 or 15. We will just accept it or, or what you should do with it. Okay? We throw an exception at them. Say, no, no, no. The possible values is 0 to 12. Okay? And then they need to handle it or do or crash their program. We don't care. Because they told us nonsense. We will throw at them an exception. It's up to them to do. If they don't handle it, what happened to, your, to their program? It will crash. Okay. So they shouldn't, they learn the hard way. Uh, they shouldn't throw at us. They shouldn't give us a nonsense values so we don't get upset and throw at them exceptions. Let me see if I have some example here. I'm not sure if I have an example. Because of the time, let me show you through here. Okay. So this is an example coming from the book. Take a look at this. Um, take a look at this. You see here, this is the hour, the minutes, and the seconds. Yeah? So the hours should be between 0 and... This is the time, sitting the time. So the hours should be between 0 and 24, the minutes between 0 and 60, and the seconds 0 and 60. Yes? These are the possible values for hour, minutes, and seconds. Okay. Now, if somebody tries to give us some value outside this possible range, what we will do... It's literally, literally, can you see the word there? Can you see it? Throw. A new illegal argument exception, and we can give them some little bit of hints. So basically what we do, we throw at them an exception. 
uh, in this case. And exceptions, there are lots of exceptions that come with Java built in, like for example, this one is built in in Java, it's called illegal argument exception. Later on, later on, towards the end of the course, we will see how we can create our own exceptions if we wish. Okay? But for now, this is enough. We can just use the built-in for now. Yeah? Uh, let me show you some other examples. Okay. And that is the throw-in part. And this is the, the catch-in part. Yes? So, I know this set time is very uh, cranky and it can, can get upset and throw things at me. So, I'm not going to just call it. I call it and protect myself. Basically. Try. If something happens, I will jump into. If something happens here, what will happen? Instead of crashing the whole program, it will throw an exception, and that exception, I will not ignore it. If I ignore that exception, what happened to my program? It will crash. Crash means stops completely, and it will not continue the execution. We don't want to do that. Okay, so we will come here. So instead of crashing, we go to the, to the catch. And once the catch is finished, we go and finish the, the rest of the execution. That's the idea of exception handling. So to summarize, so an exception is an indication that something is going wrong in your program. So you need to do something about it. So in programming terminology, when I say do something about the exception, what are we trying to do? It's called handling the exception. We need to handle the exception. How do I handle the exception? Go to the, uh, go to the lines, the, the, the lines of code that are suspicious, that could throw an exception at us, uh, that not, not too friendly lines, and basically we wrap them in a try and catch. We say, okay, try this, hopefully everything goes well. If something doesn't go well, jump into the catch block and do something about it. Do you have to know what the exception Very good question. L last one. I will show you here. Okay. Now, if you know the exception will be better because every exception you might handle it differently. Okay. But if you want, you can have you can have another exception handler. By the way, you can have multiple exception handlers. This is the general one. You can have multiple catchers. Because, the, because this method is so volatile, uh, it's so uh, kind of cranky and unfriendly, it can throw at you many exceptions. Okay, many type of exceptions. You can catch, you can catch each one because each one might, you might handle in a different way. So you can have a special catch and you can have one that is catch everything else. Yeah. Or if you want to handle them all the same way, you can just have one. It's a good question. You can just have one. and But the type will be exception, which in this case means any exception regardless of the type. Any exception regardless of the type. Or you can be specific. It's up to you, depending on the context. If you have some handling that is specific to the exception, you will have multiple exception handlers. If you have one, one handler that handles everything, then you catch exception. But this is a good, good question. Now, can we just handle exception? We can throw our own as well. Of course, we can throw our own. So we can also, in our methods, when we don't like something, we can throw an exception to the call. That's the idea of exception handling. As we go through the course, we will come and revisit this. And we will see some exception handling, especially when we deal with files and so on. Okay, thank you very much.